This year's Battle Force boxes have been announced and the Custodes box is an absolute standout. So today we're going to take a look at it, talk about the units and some different lists you can build using said box. Greetings everyone, my name is Reynolds. It's been a moment since I've made a video, but once I saw this battle box, I knew that I had to come back in and just talk about it for a little bit. Some of you might have seen my videos on the Salamanders, but besides those, I actually also play Adeptus Custodes. In fact, they have been the army I've been playing more or less non-stop since the last four or five months. So while I'm not an expert, I do feel like I have a pretty good insight into how they work, how they play, and what's good. Now if we look at the box itself, we can see that it contains Trajan Valoris, who is the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes, 15 Custodian Guards, 3 Alaris Terminators, and 3 Virtus Praetors. All in all, this box comes to 266.5 euros if you were to buy all the models individually. Now my overall impressions on the box is that it's very very good for a new player. It's not terrible for someone who's already collecting custodies, but they are a bit heavy on the guards. 15 guards. And if you already own custodies, chances are you already have the amount of guards that you want. So I would have liked to see them either add some custodian wardens just for variety, or if they wanted to make the box slightly more competitive and or better, I think they should have added either three more bikes or a contemptor dreadnought instead of five of the guards. So for example, it would have been Trajan Valoris, 10 guards, three Alaris Terminators, and then six Virtus Praetors. Now even for new players where the first purchase is super valuable and really good, Buying it twice, you lose out on some value, you'll end up with 30 guard, which is just way overkill, and of course you'll also have two Trajans, which you, one of them you just can't use. In general though, this is a really good box, and even if you do buy it twice, you don't lose as much value as you do with some of the other Battle Force boxes, because Trajan is only a small part of the box's complete value, whereas someone as Mortarian or Magnus is a big part of the value you get in those boxes. So in that sense, you don't lose out on that much value if you do decide to buy the box twice. That being said, I think you could get away with just buying this box once, then another squad of bikes and some terminators if you like, and then you have like 2200 points, which gives you a few options between games and how you want to build your army. Now maybe you are curious about the custodies, maybe you've played against them, maybe you've seen other play them, but you don't quite know how they work. So here's just a general overview of the different rules and abilities of the Adeptus Custodies. First and foremost, you will have a 2-up save on almost every model alongside a 4-plus invulnerable save on almost every model. Some of your vehicles will have a 3-up save and some of them will have a 5-up invulnerable instead. But the majority of things will have a 2-up save and a 4-up invulnerable or a 2-up save and a 5-up invulnerable. Seeing as we are such an elite army, you also count as two models when it comes to objective control and the lookout sir rule. Finally, probably the best and most potent part of playing custodies is that you're hitting on twos in melee and shooting on every single data sheet. That means your basic troop, your biggest tank, your most threatening robot, they will all hit on twos in melee and shooting, which is absolutely amazing. You also have access to Marshal Katas. Katas? Uh, no one knows how to pronounce this, so don't, don't come after me. In short, every command phase, you pick between one stance from each different Marshal Kata, and these gives you smaller abilities, such as being able to advance and do actions, or plus one strength versus vehicles and monsters, etc, etc. An important thing I need to say here that people seem to miss is that Marshal Kata only works for bikers and infantry. No, your Dreadnought cannot advance and do actions and your tank cannot advance and shoot, while counting as remaining stationary. This is for bikers and infantry only. Finally, you have the shield host. These are the different versions of sub-factions for the custodies. Much like every newer codex, they come with two fighting style traits, which is your sub-faction passive bonus, a relic, a warlord trait, and one stratagem. Now that we looked at the general rules, let's look at the general himself, Trajan Valoris. Now Trajan is included in almost every single list, despite his point cost at 200 points. And as you'll hopefully see after this quick run through, there's a reason for that. So of course Trajan gets the 2-up save and 4-up invulnerable we mentioned earlier. He's only 6-inch movement, strength 5, toughness 5, 8 wounds and 6 attacks. 
When we start looking at his war gear, he has the Watcher's Axe and a Misericordia. The Misericordia is something that a lot of troops will have access to. This is a free upgrade for many of them. It used to cost points, but it doesn't anymore. And it's basically just one more attack at Strength 5, AP 2, Damage 1. The Watcher's Axe is basically a relic. It's Strength times 2, AP 3, and then Damage 3. With six attacks, this guy can easily take out a whole group of Terminators if no defensive buffs are layered on them. And in general, he is just, well, a really good general. <laughs> For his abilities, he gets the Ages of the Emperor and Martial Qatar. Those are things we already talked about. He also comes equipped with the Adamantide Mantle, which gives him a 5 plus feel no pain against all forms of damage. He has an ability called Captain General, which is very simple. If you make him your Warlord, which you must do if you do include him in your army, you gain 1 CP and then you get 2 Warlord traits. So basically, you pay 1 CP to gain 1 CP and then you get 2 free Warlord traits. Those two Warlord traits cannot be chosen, they are very specific. It is the Master of the Martial Strategies, which allows you to reorder your Martial Kata once per game, as well as gain a CP back on a 5-up whenever you spend one. The second one is Champion of the Imperium, which gives you a 6-inch Heroic Intervention, as well as allows Trajan to reroll all his hit rolls. His Legendary Commander ability gives him an aura of 6 inches, where every core unit can reroll once to hit or to wound. Now remember that Custodes are hitting on twos. So hitting on twos and being able to re-roll ones is absolutely amazing. It means that 9 out of 10 of your attacks go through. And custodies are also pretty strong, so there's a decent chance that when you're wounding things, it'll also be on twos. Then all of a sudden, you have almost full conversion on hits and wounds. Finally, Trajan is equipped with the Moment Shackle, which gives him the ability, once per battle, to either interrupt for free, so like using the counter-offensive stratagem. He can also fight twice, or he can reduce a failed saving throw to zero damage. Now, the ones you're going to be using most of the time is the fight twice or reduce a failed saving throw to zero damage. The interrupt can be nice, but usually if Trajan is in the fray, you also have something else in with him, and there's usually not a need to interrupt with Trajan. The important thing to remember about the fight twice ability is that it's not you fight with Trajan and then you fight again. Rather, it's you fight with Trajan and then once everyone else has fought, Trajan can choose to fight one more time. Reducing a failed saving flow to zero damage is pretty explanatory. Let's, let's say that a Melta gets through and you don't want to risk Trajan dying. You just go ahead and say, you know what? I failed this saving throw, but it is zero damage. So yeah, Trajan Valoris, expensive at 200 points, but in my experience, he has been worth that cost almost every single game I've brought him. Moving away from Trajan and into the Custodian Guards, these guys come equipped with either Swords and Shields or a Spear. They cost 45 points per model with the Spear and 50 points per model with the Sword and Shield. You can bring 3 to 6 models in a unit. They have 6 inch movement, Strength 5, Toughness 5, 3 wounds and 3 attacks. They of course have a 2 up save as well as a 4-up invulnerable by default. Now, the guard box actually builds 4 different models, and 5 if you count the different variants of weapons the shield captain can equip. Starting off, we have the guard with the Guardian Spear and Misericordia. The Guardian Spear will bring the guard up to Strength 7, AP 3, Damage 2. And then, of course, the Misericordia, as I mentioned with Trajan, will give you plus 1 attack at Strength 5, AP 2, Damage 1. The guard with Sentinel Blade and Presidium Shield gets Strength 6 in melee, AP minus 3, Damage 2, and plus 1 armor save from the shield. In terms of raw melee combat, the spear is slightly better due to its Strength 7, which means that you'll be wounding on force against most vehicles, but AP and damage is the complete same. The Sentinel Blade and Presidium Shield version does not get to bring a Misericordia, so the Spear version also gets a little bit more damage output in melee specifically. When it comes to shooting, the Guardian Spear is 24 inches, Strength 4, AP 1, Damage 2, Rapid Fire, whereas the Sentinel Blade is a pistol at range 12, Strength 4, AP 1, Damage 2. Damage-wise, they are the same profile, but the Spear has better range. But of course, the Sentinel Blades are pistols, which means that if you're stuck in combat, Combat, you do get to shoot, whereas you don't get that ability with the spears. Now you can take one of the guards and choose to build as a Vexillus Praetor instead. These are the guys with a flag in their hand. The Vexillus Praetor can either take a Guardian Spear, a Castellan Axe, or the Shield. Now do note that in the guard box there actually is no Castellan Axes, which means you'll have to buy a Warden's Box or a Terminator Box to actually have the Axe to equip on the guy. The flag itself can give you either plus one attack, dense cover, or light cover 
for any core or character within 6 inches. I'll talk more about what I would recommend you put on the Vexillus Praetor later, but in general, most people stick the Guardian Spear or the Shield on him. The Shield gives him that plus 1 armor save, which means that he's walking around with a 1-up armor save, as all Custodes are a 2-up save by default. And the same argument can be used between the Guardian Spear or the Sentinel Blades guards. The Guardian Spears are slightly more killy, whereas the Sentinel Blades are slightly more tangy. Finally, you can decide to build a Shield Captain. This guy can take the Spear, the Sword, or a Castellan Axe. He gets 6 attacks base and 7 wounds. He can then choose to either take a free Misericordia or pay 5 points to equip himself with a Sentinel Shield, giving him that plus 1 armor save. Now, build-wise, there is no difference between a Guard and a Shield Captain. So what you can do is you can say that your Shield Captain uh, is not wearing a helmet, like you see on the image here, or you can just simply decide to paint him slightly differently, maybe give him some different colors or anything like that. And then when you need to use a shield captain, you can simply say, this is my shield captain. And when you don't need it, you can just throw him in the guard squad with the rest of them. The general tactics of the custodian guards are, well, all purpose troops. They're decent at fighting, they have okay shooting, and they're also great for holding objectives. That being said, custodians are very expensive per model. And if you have 150 points, standing in the very backfield of the map, just holding an objective, it can be a bit of a waste. You do have the option of taking prosecutors who are way cheaper and can do the same role when it comes to backfield objective holding. In today's current metagame, most people take shields for more survivability. After the nerfs, custodies lost OPSEC on anything that wasn't troops, which means that these are your only true option for objective contesters. And so most of the time, it's more about keeping them alive than making them a bit more killy, because you can put a lot of other stuff in your list that can do the killing for them. The Vexillus Praetor, as I mentioned, usually takes a spear or a shield. The shield if you want to stay alive, and the spear if he wants a little bit of punching. The shield captain on foot is not really used, but as I said, paint one without a helmet and use for either a shield captain when you need him, or put him in the squad when you don't. Moving on to the Alaris Terminators. These are my favorite models in the Custodian range. That being said, they're unfortunately not great. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. For their base stats and gear, every single model will cost you 60 points, no matter which equipment you put on them. The interesting part about the Alaris Terminators is that they can be one-man units or they can be six-man units. They are also six-inch movement, strength five, toughness five, but they get plus one wound and plus one attack compared to the Custodian Guards. They are also all equipped with a Ballistus Grenade Launcher on one arm. It is D3 shots, Strength 5, AP 3, and 1 damage. Oh, it's also Assault, so you can advance and shoot. Before the changes, the Misericordia cost points, but it doesn't anymore, so every single model, no matter their loadout, can bring Misericordia for free, so why wouldn't you? When it comes to building options, you have the Alaris with the Guardian Spear. This is the exact same Guardian Spear as you put on the Custodian Guard. However, you can also give them the Castellan Axe, which trades one point of AP for one point of strength. Against Armor of Contempt, this kind of sucks. But on the other hand, against Armor of Contempt factions, Strength 8 is really good, because Space Marines are toughness 4, so you'd be wounding on 2s instead of on 3s with the Spear. Much like the Custodian Guard, a Terminator can also go ahead and take a flak instead of an axe. The aura of the flags can be the exact same things as the guards, either plus one attack, dense cover, or light cover for core characters within six inches. Unlike the custodian guards, however, if you do take a flag, you cannot bring a melee weapon, which makes him slightly less great. Your last building option is of course a shield captain in terminator armor. He can either take the guardian spear or the castellan axe. He gets six attacks and eight wounds and can take a misericordia for free. For general tactics, there's not much to say. In the current meta game, the Alaris terminator is unfortunately very rarely used. That being said, when they are used, they are great for the secondary called behind enemy lines because you can take two or three one-man units and just drop them down in the enemy's deployment zone. And while they're not the biggest threat on the board, they shouldn't be underestimated. I mean, they still get four attacks at either strength seven or strength eight with damage two and a grenade launcher, which is great at taking care of chaff. They can also be deceptively tough to remove. Maybe your opponent thinks that they can just throw a slightly decent model unit against these terminators. And if you roll a little bit good, they'll still be standing, and then all of a sudden, your opponent has problems on their hands. When it comes to the Vexillus, I would not recommend taking a Terminator Vexillus, 
very rarely is that usable. There is some shenanigans you can do with the Praetorian plate on a Vexillus, so you can teleport him onto some objective alongside some other units and then get the buff on there. But in general, I would just stick with the Custodian Guard variant of the Vexillus if I were to take one. Finally, the Terminator Shield Captain is fine. He doesn't have OPSEC anymore, he's not as scary as the Shield Captain on Dawn Eagle Jet Bike, but in general, he's fine. Put Praetorian plate on him and he can do some fun shenanigans teleporting around on the map, giving rerolls of ones, and just being a little bit of a menace. Finally, we have the Virtus Praetors. These guys are 80 or 85 points per model, depending on loadout. You can bring between three or six models in a unit. They all come with 14 inch movement, strength five, toughness six, five wounds each and four attacks, plus a Misericordia for three. Every single model is equipped with an Interceptor Lance, which is strength plus two, bringing you to strength seven, AP three, damage two, and if you heroically intervene or charge, you get plus one to wound. Now, in my humble opinion, the Virtus Praetor might very well be the best unit in the Custodian range if you exclude Forge World. Even if you do include Forge World, they are still in the top three, as they are just really versatile, they can be a very good shooting unit, they can be a very good melee unit, and they're also very fast and tough. For building options, there's not a whole lot. You can either equip the bikes with Hurricane Bolters, which are Rapid Fire 6, Strength 4, AP 0, and Damage 1. Now, Strength 4, AP 0 sounds really bad on paper, but if you're like me and you play against a lot of elves, then having 12 shots that they still have to take on their 4-up or 5-up invulnerable save is really good. The more common choice, however, is equipping the Virtus Praetors with Salvo Launchers. This is a heavy one, Strength 8, AP 4, damage free plus D3 shot. Incredibly powerful to be able to have a mobile unit that moves 14 inches, shoots 24 inches with the salvo launcher, and hits on twos. Finally, you can build a shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike. He can either take the hurricane bolter or the salvo launcher. He gets six attacks and nine wounds. I did not mention it for the shield captain on foot or the Alaris terminator, but Every shield captain gets the option of shield captain upgrades, which are point upgrades that give them additional abilities. I won't talk too much about it here, but let me just say that tip of the spear is really freaking good. For general tactics, when it comes to the Virtus Praetors, you can use them as either anti-tank or anti-horde units, depending on if they have hurricane bolters or salvo launchers. Do keep in mind, you are very free to take, say, one guy in the unit with hurricane bolters and then two guys with salvo launchers. Because their interceptor lances are strength seven by the fault and then get plus one to wound when you charge or heroically intervene, you're very often wounding on twos against things that even have minus one to wound. Captain almost always gets tip of the spear because when he charges or heroically intervenes, he can reroll his own hit and wound rolls of one. So again, he's hitting on two, rerolling ones, wounding on most likely twos, rerolling ones, that's really freaking good. Finally, when it comes to the amount of models you bring in a unit, most people stick to the minimum squad size of three. However, I do actually personally like running four in a squad, so that way I can have two hurricane boulders and two salvo launchers, but that is of course completely up to you. Now we've looked at all of the units, here are my suggested build guide for how you build the entire box. Just to be clear, this is how to build the box, not how to build your army list. First of all, Trajan Valoris. He can only be built as Trajan Valoris, so that's very simple. I'd take one of the three Terminators and put him as a shield captain. I would do this because the Terminators can be taken in one-man squads and as such are not hurt by losing one model to become an HQ. Same thing for the guards, you have 15 of them. 15! So you can build one with Guardian Spear and one with Sentinel Blade and Presidium Shield. Again, there is actually no difference between building a Custodian Guard and a Custodian Guard Shield Captain. So you can just build one of each and be like, yeah, this game this is my captain and this game he's not a captain. Just paint him slightly differently so you yourself know which one is which. For the troops, I'd split it right down the middle, six guards with Sentinel Blades and six guards with Guardian Spear. Give yourself some flexibility, even though the Sentinel Blades are the preferred choice right now, that might change in a month, or a two months, or in a week, who knows? And having six of each means you can take two units of them, since there are a minimum squad size of three. And much like the bikes, you can actually mix and match this, so you could have two guys with spears and one guy with sword and shield, or the other way around. For the elites, I recommend you take your two Alaris Terminators and build them as, well, Alaris Terminators. Whether you give them spears or axes is completely up to you. I'm a big fan of the axes personally, so I'm gonna recommend axes, 
but go ahead and build the spears if you feel like it. Now, we've used one guard for a shield captain with a spear, and another guard for a shield captain with sword and shield, and then the other 12 guards as, well, guards. That leaves us with one more guard to build as a Vexillus Praetor. I'd recommend you give him the Guardian Spear so you can punch back a little bit, but the shield is also an option. And of course, if you are a madman who actually magnetizes their infantry, you can magnetize them so you can either take the spear or the shield. And then finally, I would build my three Virtus Praetors with Salvo Launchers. If you are gonna keep playing Custodes, you're gonna get more of these bikes. So for now, taking these salvo launchers is the safe choice in my opinion. I wouldn't build one of these guys as a captain, because if you build one of them as a captain, well, in that case, you can't use the two others, as they are a minimum squad size of three. All in all, if you build the models the way that I have proposed here, you will end up with 1585 points. This can go beyond 1600 if you, instead of building six guard with guardian spears, you build 12 guard with Sentinel Blade and Presidium Shield as they are slightly more expensive. So from buying this one Battle Force box, you almost have a 2,000 point army. If you buy another box of Virtus Praetors, well then you're close to about 1,800 points. And then if you get a Contemptor Dreadnought or a Forge World Dreadnought, then, well, you're at 2,000. Now, when it comes to building actual lists for playing the game, this is very dependent on which shield host you want to play and like what your general meta is but I've given a suggestion at a 1000 point army here. I'm gonna leave it on screen for a few seconds. You can pause the video if you wanna look closer at it. I've done the same thing for a 1500 points army. I'll leave it on the screen for a bit for you to look at. And with that, we conclude the video talking about the Adeptus Custodes Battle Force box. I hope you liked it. I know it was a bit long, but I wanted to go in depth as I feel a lot of videos about these Battle Force boxes are just, well, good or bad, value or not value. Whether you should buy it or not, I cannot tell you. I don't know which country you live in. The currency might be different. And of course, we are not 100% sure of the price of this box. If we assume it's the same price as last year, you'll save about 30 to 35% compared to buying these things individually. But only time will tell when GW releases the prices. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I plan on making a next step video, so to speak, on what to get after you get this Battle Force box. And then if there's ask for more Custodes content, do let me know in the comments below what kind of questions you have, whether that be list building or just general tips and tricks, and uh, I'll take a look and see if I can do something about that. For now, though, again, thank you for watching. I think I've said that three times, and until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful time.